Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're answering the question, how strong should you be? But before we get into that, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, we're talking about resolving aches and pains, preventing injury, and optimizing your performance as a human being. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into this one. Alright guys, so today we're answering the question, how strong should you be? And obviously this can be a very difficult question to answer because of all the variables that could be taken into account here when we are answering it. But overall we're going to be answering for the general population to the elite athlete today. So somewhere in that range, if you fall in those categories, this video is definitely for you to give you some parameters that you can be working off of in order to guide the amount of strength that you should have and the intensity of your work that you're trying to strive for. Now, in order to answer the question today, we're gonna to be using a set of seven exercises that were established by Dr. Chad Waterbury, a graduate of the University of uh, Southern California. In coordination with Dr. John Russin, they have come together to set up a set of seven functional standards of strength overall. And we're gonna be using those to kind of give you some guidance today in this video. So we're gonna be going over seven different exercises that you can use to guide your strength and the ranges that you should fall in within those exercises. But before we go any further today, make sure you take a moment to stop by the description and grab Recalibrate. These are my free nutrition guidelines that you can download and get a great start to your programming overall. All right, ready? So exercise number one of the functional standards of strength is the farmer's walk. Obviously a great exercise to really strengthen what we call the pillar concept of the core. So that's the glutes, the core musculature using the abdomen, the erector spinae, the musculature, the shoulder blades, and be able to connect all three of those ranges from shoulders through the abs into the glutes and create that solid structure as well as a solid grip strength. Now, the variation that they recommend in this carry is using a hex bar to load up and carry, but you can also use heavy dumbbells or heavy kettlebells. Now for the average person or the general population performing this, you should be able to carry about 100% of your body weight up to 30 seconds. Or if you're going for more of the elite athlete end of that, it's 200% of your body weight for that same 30 second round. Now, if you can't actually lift the weight that you're intended to carry from the floor, you can also elevate it to begin with and start with the weights elevated to give yourself a little bit of assistance so you do not have to deadlift that weight from the floor. Now, the other six exercises that are gonna follow are based off of a one rep max, but we actually don't recommend that you test your one rep max. It's more important or more appropriate that you would test your three rep max range for these and then calculate out what that would equate to for your one rep max to see if you fall into these categories. So those are pretty accurate calculations if you use a three rep max or a five rep max and then translate it out to a one, one rep max and see if you kind of fall in those categories and that way you are saving yourself the time loading up and the effort and the overall strain on the joints. So we're protecting your body overall, not forcing you to do a one rep max effort, but doing it at a lower intensity and then calculating out. Exercise number two, the Romanian deadlift. Now we're going with the Romanian deadlift and not a conventional or standard deadlift because it allows you to start from an elevated platform rather than actually having to pull from the floor, which most cases it might not be appropriate for everyone. So the Romanian deadlift is a range of motion that most people are able to handle and safely execute. The safety and execution is the main reason this exercise was chosen overall. 
Now for this one, what they recommend is obviously using a barbell to perform the exercise, but being able to perform about 180% of your body weight for a one rep max. So for a 150 pound person, that would be a 270 pound Romanian deadlift. Exercise number three, the reverse lunge. Now you can do different lunge variations of course, but the reverse lunge or a lunge period is chosen because of the strength that it requires in a split stance position as well as on a single leg overall. Now in this one, they're recommending that you're able to perform 40% of your body weight contralaterally loaded. So that would mean holding the weight in the side or on the side of the leg that would be stepping back in the case of a reverse lunge. So with that same 150 pound person, if we're using that, that would be a 60 pound load of that exercise. So 60 pound load for a one rep max total. Exercise number four is the bench press. And with the bench press, it's obviously gonna be a barbell that you're using in this case, and you should be able to load up, if you're a man, to 125% of your body weight for a one rep max, or for a female, about 85 to 90% of your body weight for that same one rep max. So once again, for a 150 pound male in this case, if we're using 125% of the body weight, that would be about 188 pounds that that individual would be lifting. Exercise number five is a horizontal chest supported row. And for this one, they recommend being able to place the support for females, specifically on the abdomen so that the breasts don't get in the way. Uh, for guys, it doesn't matter as much if it can be supported by the sternum or not. But pulling in that horizontal plane, being able to pull for men about 140% of your body weight for that one rep max and for women 100% of your body weight for that one rep max. Now I don't have a good visual for this one to show you necessarily but I will do a makeshift best I can version of a chest supported row in a horizontal plane to give you some idea of what it might look like. If you're in a gym setting, you might have an actual machine that does this. So I know there's some hammer strength machines that do chest supported rows or a Cybex I'm sure has something very similar as well. So you might be able to test your strength on that machine and use that as your standard as well. Exercise number six is a vertical press or in this case, the strict press is what we'll call it. Once again, we're coming back to that pillar concept of being able to brace the core well and overall press that weight overhead. Now for the strict press, they're recommending that you be able to push 80% of your body weight for males and 60% of your body weight for females in this case. And last but not least, Exercise number seven is a weighted pull up or a vertical pull in this case. Now for males, they're suggesting that you should be able to pull 140% of your body weight. So that would be your body plus loading up an extra 40%, whether it's via a plate hanging from a belt or however you want to load that up. But that's for men. For women, 100% of your body weight is the suggested one rep max that you should be able to perform. And there you guys have it. So these are the seven functional standards of strength that have been set by Dr. Chad Waterbury and Dr. John Russin in coordination with one another in order to provide you an example of the amount of strength that you should be able to exhibit as someone of the general population or moving up in toward that elite athlete range. Functional strength, keep that in mind. Now, it should be known that if you don't quite fall within the norms of what they're saying here, then take it for what it's worth and do the best that you can with your strength training and your conditioning overall. These are to give you some guidelines. Not everybody always fits into a box and we should always keep that in mind when we're training and conditioning ourselves as well. We're all unique in our own ways and we all have different strengths and abilities and what might be best for you might not be best for me or vice versa. So there should be some variability in this, but it might give you some guidelines to work by as well.
If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that thumbs up down below. Share it with a friend. Make sure they know what they should be living up to at this point or at least striving for maybe a little bit. And leave a comment below letting me know where you fall in these strength standards overall. Have you done all these exercises? Have you even performed them? Do you think you could even fall anywhere close to what they're saying the strength standard could be? And if not, that's okay as well. Are you at least trying? Let me know where you're at right now and I'd be loving to talk with you about it some more. If you haven't already, make sure you take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Every Thursday we're doing videos on how to resolve pain, prevent injury, and overall optimize your performance. Jump on it. And if you want something specifically tailored to you, make sure you take a moment to drop by the website and grab your free one hour strategy call with me. It's one hour focused on you, your goals, and the steps that you need to take to begin to get there. So take advantage of that. The link is down below in the description, and I hope to see you soon. I want to thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you next time.